with the internet. And um, so we're gonna go with who we have in here now. Um, the first thing that I'm gonna do with you guys, <laughs> it might. Um, um, the first thing I'm gonna do with you guys is uh, play Kahoot because I wanna go over the water cycle with you guys. Um, and the reason being is because I have an assignment. I'm gonna share my screen with you guys right now. Um, I have an assignment in there. And remember module 16 is not due until Friday, the 19th, which is actually my son's birthday. Um, and we are here and we're in period five, our volcano, go into our modules. And we're in module 16. So um, I, I went over the water cycle slideshow with you last week. <laughs> And then you had something to read and watch. And then you had to make a water cycle representation. I just want to go over this quickly with you guys because some people have handed it in. Four people in this class have handed it in and I've graded them. Um, and everyone is leaving out the word sublimation. So it's not just here in this class. It's here in other classes as well. Um, everybody is leaving out the word sublimation. So when you do your model or your drawing, Besides having the sun, trees, lakes, clouds, mountains, um, or body of water, whatever you want to put here, um, you need to use these five words, evaporation, sublimation, transpiration, condensation, and precipitation. Those all have to be on the poster and in the proper place, indicating those things that are actually happening. Um, before we play the Kahoot, I want to go over a few things with you. So. I would like you guys to take out a piece of paper and a pen because these notes will help you in creating your water cycle representation as well as with the Kahoot. So go get yourselves a piece of paper and a pen because I'm going to give you some notes about this and then um, we'll go over more of what you have to do. Oh, thank you, Lonnie. You know, funny enough, Saturday was my daughter's birthday, so we had her birthday party yesterday. So my, they're only six days apart. Um, so yeah, we have lots of birthday celebration over throughout the week. Thank you, I will, Mia. <clears throat> I took her, her and a couple of friends horseback riding yesterday. How oh, are you, Lonnie? That's cool. It's interesting how that works out. Me and my sister are four days apart. Five years and four days. Yeah, it's interesting how that works. Okay, so I'm gonna assume y'all have a piece of paper and a pen right now. I wanna go over some things with you because we have to go back and think about chemistry, which was like, oh my gosh, seems like forever ago, right? Just a few months ago, we were doing chemistry. So what I'd like you to put on your piece of paper, um, all the way to the left, right, solid. In the middle, right, liquid. And to the right, right, gas. So you have solid, liquid, gas. And we're going to talk about water since we're doing the water cycle. So when water goes from a solid to a liquid, draw an arrow from solid to liquid. When water goes from a solid to a liquid, we say that it's melting, right? That's your piece of ice going into water, which is a liquid. So we say it's melting. Then draw an arrow from liquid to gas. For water to go from liquid to gas, we need to apply heat, just like we have to apply heat to go from ice to water. And from liquid to gas, we call that evaporation. <clears throat> and then we also talked about how a solid can be changed directly into a gas, skipping over the liquid phase. And that's known as sublimation, right? And we, I had dry ice and I showed you how that happens with dry ice. So if we're going from left to right, from solid to liquid to gas, all of those things require heat or heat energy to be absorbed. We need to take in heat energy. Remember we talked about endothermic and exothermic, right? So <clears throat> endothermic, taking heat in, we're absorbing heat energy um, to be able to go from a solid to a liquid to a gas. 
We can also go the other direction. We can go from right to left. We can go from gas to a liquid. And if you draw an arrow from gas to a liquid, we have condensation. That's like when we wake up in the morning and there's dew on the grass or we go out and our patio you know, has droplets of water on it. That's condensation. Or maybe you have um, a glass of iced tea and you, because of the ice um, and, and in the glass and the, the warm air, it causes condensation on the outside of the glass, right? So that's from a gas to a liquid. Now we can go from a liquid to a solid. And to go from a liquid to a solid, we have freezing, right? So it's taking your water and freezing it and making an ice cube. Then we can also go from a gas all the way over to a solid and skipping the liquid phase. <clears throat> and that's called deposition. Deposition when you go from a gas over to a solid. So if we are going from right to left, instead of taking in heat, we're releasing heat or giving heat off, exothermic, right? So we talked about endothermic and exothermic reactions, um, and it's very visible in that water um, change of phase there, which is a physical change, not a chemical change, a physical change. So I just went over evaporation, sublimation, condensation, precipitation is when um, water in any of its phases falls to the, from the sky to the ground because of gravity, right? So um, that could be rain, sleet, snow, hail. And transpiration is when um, plants take in water through the roots and nutrients through the roots and it brings it up into the leaves of the plant. And um, those plants can also, those leaves can also give off water vapor because of the stomata. And we've talked about the stomata in the past when we did photosynthesis, um, it opens and closes. And when it opens, it allows for the release of water vapor into the atmosphere. That release of water vapor into the atmosphere from plants is called transpiration or evapotranspiration. Is everyone good on all of that, that I just put in there? Do you have any questions? Aiden gave me a thumbs up, but you've got, I didn't go too fast. Okay, fantastic. So you should be able to get that project completed, right? Um, draw it or, or create a model, it's your own creation. After you do that, um, the next page is a uh, quiz. <clears throat> and I'm going, I cannot stress it enough. As many times as I said it last week, there are still people handing in answers to the last question. Let's just go into here and take a look at it. You have vocabulary matching that you have to do. Then you have a video to watch. From this video, you have this question, question two, and you can answer based on the information from the video. So it says, watch the following video and answer the questions. Question three is the one that, that um, is causing some problems in getting full credit because it's worth 10 points. If you give me a five word sentence, you're not getting all 10 points. Here they wanna know, or I wanna know, identify a chemical compound or an element and explain how it acts as a water pollutant. What does it do? How does it pollute the water? It is not a one sentence answer. If you're giving me one sentence or you're not answering how it acts as a water pollutant, you will not get full credit. Now, it allows me to write comments on the question itself. So once I grade it, you can go in and, and do it a second time and add to your um, comment here if I've written to you that it's not enough information. So you have this quiz to take, but really take notes while you're watching the video so you're able to answer question three in a few sentences, a small paragraph. Then you have <clears throat> on here, I've added for you guys a um, slideshow for the carbon and nitrogen cycle. 
And we'll go through those really quick after we play Kahoot um, because you guys have an activity to do where it's compare and contrast the carbon and nitrogen cycle. Now, three people have um, handed it in and I've really not been grading these yet simply because I haven't given the information out and I just added in the module that slideshow for you. The slideshow is going to be really helpful in coming up with the nine facts that you need. So we'll talk about them um, when we go over the slideshow. And we'll also talk about greenhouse gases when we go over the slideshow. So until we get to that point, we are going to Kahoot. So I would like you guys to log into the Kahoot. There are quite a few in the class and I would like to see you sign into the Kahoot once you get the login pin, which is 573-852, 573-852. And these are gonna have to do with the water cycle. So if you have your water cycle notes out, that's great. You can use them, 573-852. Yay, Alex is with us. Kylie is with us. Is that a spoon, Lynn? And like a tiki or something? Gosh, I don't even know what that is. It is a spoon, interesting. Hi, Jazz. Alicia and Kylie are with us, nice. Peace, Lonnie. Okay, that's great, Sophia. <clears throat> Whatever works best for you. I know that some people are having internet problems. I get that. Madrid, how are you, Madrid? Um, some people are having internet problems. I mean, it's, it's, yeah. I have no idea who this is, so we're gonna bump them. Hi, Travis. Good, I'm glad to hear that, Madrid. Oh, sorry. See, now you've got a, I had no idea who that was. So, sorry. You can do that again. That's fine. It's only 12 people logged in right now. So let's get logged in. Um, Isaac, where are you? <clears throat> Thank you, Aiden. Cyan, I don't see you. Xander, Miles. Try to get in again, Dom, sorry. Uh, why not? Are you in here? There you are, okay. Yeah, I got it. Michaela, Althea, Preston, Raymond, Naomi, what are you guys? Okay, thank you, Cyan. <clears throat> All right, so if you're if you're not able to log on, at least pay attention, try to answer the questions. To the best of your ability, you need this information. Here we go. Question number one, the water cycle moves water through all of the following except, which one does water not run through? <clears throat> okay, in the atmosphere, we have it as water vapor. Humans, absolutely. Guys, we need water. If we don't have water, we, we will not survive. If you go without water for three days, you'll be dead. Humans breathe out water. Humans perspire and they give off water. Um, and obviously the oceans are water. 
rocks, absolutely rocks. Is water used to weather rocks? Yes, but water is, um, does not cycle through rocks. Rocks have their own cycle, right? The rock cycle. What force ensures that all water will flow downhill? Thank you, Xander. <laughs> Gravity. <laughs> yeah, there's that, that silly show that my kids love, Gravity Falls. Okay, gravity does make sure that water flows downhill. Next question. What is a scientific term that describes water that has drained and collected underground? Keyword is underground. Underground. That would be groundwater, absolutely. All right, a little bit of movement there. In which state of matter can water defy gravity and move upward toward the sky? And this picture is a key component. Big, big clue. Big, big clue. That would be a gas, absolutely. I'm glad that you all got the clue there. <clears throat> True or false, due to wind and atmospheric restrictions, water vapor can only travel short distances. That would be a very big false. Um, the atmosphere is global. Water vapor travels through the atmosphere as a gas and it can travel far and wide and yeah. Which of the following is not a way that water can travel within the water cycle on earth? through plants and animals, via gravity, in deep ocean currents, or through a rising of cold or salty water. And wow, um, we just had a question about gravity, guys. Gravity pulls water down, right? Um, plants and animals, we just said that animals go through the process of respiration and perspiration. Plants go through the process of transpiration. It's definitely in the oceans. So um, the rising of cold or salty water would be the correct answer. Okay, oh, six points away from Dom. Dom got kicked out. I wonder if Dom rejoined, I don't know. Um, in which state of matter can water become invisible? Solid, liquid, plasma, or gas? You had a question about this earlier. That would be a gas, absolutely. Are you telling me that you can't see ice? Yeah, I know, Don, that's what I just said. Um, water as a solid is ice, water as a liquid. Go turn on the faucet. You'll see water coming out, okay? True or false, water only changes state when energy is absorbed. Look at the diagram that I got, had you guys write down. Yeah, 
No, water can't be plasma. You're right. Oh my gosh. Water energy can be absorbed or it can be released. It depends on which way you're going with the water cycle or, or the phases, right? If I'm going from a solid to a liquid to a gas, I am absorbing energy because I need the heat to be able to go from a solid to a liquid and a liquid to a gas. If I am going from a gas to a liquid, I'm still changing state, right? Because I'm going from a gas to a liquid and energy is released. So water changes state when energy is either absorbed or released. Told you, take notes. Which of the following is an example of water releasing energy? Read them all, you have 60 seconds. You should have this in your diagram. The only one that is different as far as going from left to right or right to left is freezing. You're turning water, liquid water into ice. So when you're going from right to left, that is releasing energy. When you're going from left to right, that's absorbing energy. That's why I had you guys write the diagram. <clears throat> Next question. Which of the following is an example of water, water absorbing energy? 60 seconds, read them all. which one goes in a different direction. <clears throat> which one requires heat to happen? Evaporation is the one that requires heat. Heat is energy. Freezing, condensing, and depositing all go from right to left. Evaporation goes from left to right. <clears throat> Lots of movement there. Good job, Logan. Which part of the water cycle occurs when liquid water changes into water vapor? You're going from a liquid to a gas. Liquid to a gas is evaporation. Very good. What term describes when water vapor cools and goes back into a liquid? So it's a gas to a liquid. Gas to a liquid is condensation. We talked about that. We talked about it Water vapor condensing on a blade of grass, creating dew. What term is used to describe any form of water that falls from the earth? 
Here we have snow. Snow, rain, sleet, hail. <clears throat> That would be precipitation, absolutely. Again, that will help you with your poster. Two questions left. When solid ice changes directly into water vapor, we know that as you're going from a solid to a gas, skipping the liquid phase, solid to a gas. Solid to a gas is sublimation. We did that with dry ice. <clears throat> Little movement there, last question. The release of water vapor into the air by plants is known as? That is transpiration. Again, that needs to be on your diagram that you're gonna create for me. Um, let's see how we did today in third place with 10 out of 15, Alex R, good job. 10 out of 15, a little bit faster finger is Aiden. 12 out of 15, nicely done, would be Arden. Good job, our runners up today are Kylie and Mia. Okay, so um, it looks like you guys need to uh, study up on your um, water cycle a bit. We're gonna come on over here and go into our slideshow. Um, again, I'm gonna say it one more time. If you don't have paper out for notes, I suggest you take paper out for notes. Um, notes are always very helpful. So we're gonna go through the slideshow. I'm actually not gonna go through the whole thing. I am gonna go over a couple of diagrams with you, which will give you a lot of information, but you need to look through the slideshow yourself. So I've got a diagram here of the carbon cycle. <clears throat> I'm gonna to talk to you about the carbon cycle um, and what uses it, how it cycles through the earth and, and through um, our world. Um, and then I'll talk to you about the nitrogen cycle. So here we are. And we have our uh, carbon cycle here. Again, it's cyclical, just like the water cycle, just like the rock cycle. Whatever carbon I have, I am not going to make any more carbon and I am not going to lose or destroy carbon, right? We have what we have. Um, matter cannot be lost or destroyed. So right here, I have my cow. We're going to start with a cow. And um, that cow plays a significant role in the carbon cycle in that that cow breathes out, so it gives off carbon dioxide, so carbon goes into the atmosphere, and it also um, defecates or poops, right? When the cow poops, we get a big cow pie right here, and that releases carbon into the atmosphere as well. Besides that, this cow might just fall over dead one day. When it dies, it decays, and the carbon, because it is, it's a living organism, and all living things are made of carbon, because it's made of carbon, that ca those carbon elements will return back to the earth. Same thing if these trees were to die, those are living things. Um, once they die, the carbon is returned back to the earth when it decays. Goes deep into the earth and over millions of years, we can create fossil, well, not we, the earth will create fossil fuels from those um, <clears throat> decaying or rotting um, carbon atoms that have been added to the to the ground. Um, we take those fossil fuels, we've learned how to take those fossil fuels, including coal, which is made of carbon, and um, we use it for energy in our um, uh, manufacturing plants, right? So I've got a picture in here of the industrial revolution. Right. And during the time of the Industrial Revolution, late 1800s, um, we had a big boom of industry in the world. And that industry, those factories um, that manufactured things like instead of, you know, the one seller creating one need, he created a manufacturing industry in which he created millions of needs throughout the day. 
um, this, this manufacturing company is going to use the coal for energy or fossil fuels for energy. When it burns those fossil fuels, they go into the atmosphere as carbon. That carbon is being mixed with all the other carbon that's in this atmosphere. When we have too much carbon in the atmosphere, <clears throat> we end up um, creating greenhouse gases and that has caused the um, temperature of the earth to change over a period of time. And remember when I say period of time, you know, when I'm saying about creating fossil fuels, it's not like two weeks or two years, it's millions of years, it's over a long period of time. If you think about how old the earth is. So we have carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Now, the good thing about the plants is that those plants take in that carbon dioxide and use it. When they take in the carbon dioxide, they use it with water and sunlight energy to create um, glucose, C6H12O6. So that contains carbon as well. That carbon from the glucose in this plant is either taken in by another organism, right? Like the cow or a human, or it's used by the plant itself. So here is your whole carbon cycle. Um, carbon is cycled through the water, which is the hydrosphere, through the atmosphere, right? The gases surrounding us, through the biosphere, living organisms, and through the geosphere, which is the earth itself, right? Rocks and such. Here's your carbon cycle. There's a whole bunch of information here for you guys to look at. There is an interactive diagram. So if you click here, it's gonna bring you to another page in which you can play around with the interactive diagram for the carbon cycle. Um, talk a little bit about the nitrogen cycle. Uh, the Earth's atmosphere is made up of 78% nitrogen, right? But nitrogen generally is not free floating. Nitrogen is um, always paired with another nitrogen. It cannot sustain itself. So instead of having just one nitrogen atom floating through the air, you have two bonded together. Same as oxygen. Oxygen is always O2. Nitrogen is always N2. Unless it bonds with another element, like I can have CO. So that means I only have one oxygen, but it's bonded to a carbon, right? So um, nitrogen is found in the atmosphere. Nitrogen is used by living things. Um, what it does is when the nitrogen goes, um, is returned back to the soil, it goes in as what's called ammonium and ammonium is not used by, um, organisms. So it comes up and it goes through the system and back into the soil and it combines with something called nitrogen fixing bacteria. And that nitrogen fixing bacteria breaks the nitrogen, the ammonium down into nitrates and nitrites. And those nitrates and nitrites are used um, and taken up through the roots of the plants to be used. Now, how does it help the plant? There's this handy dandy uh, diagram right here where it tells you that the nitrogen um, is brought up, uh, helps to bring up the nutrients and water through the plant to go into the leaves and um, in the, into the stem of the plant. So it promotes growth within the plant. Now, the thing is, is that <clears throat> nitrogen is used in um, fertilizer and fertilizer, as well as other things that we use in, the, in this world can affect other things. So um, because of lightning, lightning is able to split those nitrogen atoms they have a very strong bond, but the lightning is able to split those nitrogen atoms. Nitrogen is found in the water. Um, here we have our ships that are adding other pollution into the water. We have our industry, right? Burning coal and um, adding coal, uh, carbon to the atmosphere. And there's a runoff of nitrogen into the water. We have a runoff of nitrogen from urbanization um, and fertilizer. Fertilizer factories runs off, can go into the soil, I'm sorry, into the water and affect the organisms in the water and can be um, pulled into the soil as well. So nitrogen, humans can impact the nitrogen cycle. Humans can impact the carbon cycle, um, which is very dangerous for the greenhouse gases and um, the earth that we live on. 
um, and it's making things challenging as far as pollution. Um, so that was the down and dirty because I know that you guys don't have a lot of time left. Does anybody have any questions about the water cycle? We are ruining the earth. Um, that's so terrible to say. Um, it's not just us, it's been generations past, but with the whole, um, the whole industrial revolution, it's changed a lot of things. And, and after we talk about these cycles, the, the water cycle, the carbon cycle, the rock cycle, the nitrogen cycle, we're gonna talk about ecosystems. And we're gonna talk about how the buildup of carbon in the atmosphere is affecting ecosystems and how the use of fertilizers is affecting ecosystems. And if one organism dies out of an ecosystem, it's not gonna to make too much of a difference. But if I'm polluting the water too much, it will it could kill off a whole species and completely change an ecosystem. Um, yeah, it's not just cars though, Dom. There's so many other things to think of. So I really like, you know, how many of you have seen the Lorax? Like the animated two hour one or whatever with the kid that wants to get the tree for the girl. Um, that's a, that's a, a great dis a great depiction of how humans, right? That one guy made so many changes um, to the earth. There's also another movie we're gonna watch it. It's called The Biggest Little Farm. And The Biggest Little Farm is actually, it's not an animated movie. It's an actual true story documentary of somebody that created a self-sustaining farm in Moore Park, um, which is just a few towns away and a whole ecosystem there. And it's a really great movie. So um, yeah, besides producing the things that we think we need, Xander, they produce a lot of pollution power plants do, absolutely. So um, yeah, do you guys have any questions? It's, it's problematic, Lonnie. Yes. Yeah, so, um, I mean, I meant Lynn. Yes. And Lonnie to answer, to say what you're saying. I know that's why I said, as far as animals, you don't have to go vegan or vegetarian, but the, the amount of cows that we have and the amount of beef that we go through is really affecting the carbon cycle and the nitrogen cycle. So if you could remove meat from your diet one day out of seven days in the week, that will help. Completely remove meat and meat products. So that means milk and eggs and anything that's a meat product from your diet for one day, one day out of seven days, you will be helping the environment. Absolutely. So, all right, well, if you guys are good, I'm good. Um, have a wonderful, wonderful couple of days and I will see you on uh, Thursday. That is good, Lonnie, yes. Bye, Aiden.